Hey, everybody, and welcome back to TechStrong Unplugged. This is episode 13 of our series, and I'm your host, Detan Solomon. On TechStrong Unplugged, we dive into all things tech and get people up to speed with everything happening across the industry. Recently, our co-host Cassandra Chin went to the Great International Developer Summit, also known as GIDS 2024. At GIDS, Cassandra sat down with Rhythm Bhatia, who is the CEO and founder of Cognizio. Rhythm shared her journey from a small town in India to becoming a leader in educational technology and artificial intelligence. She also highlighted the importance of diversity and inclusion in technology, the need for ethical AI practices, and the value of community engagement. Without further ado, let's head over to Gibbs 2024. Welcome back to Textron Unplugged. I'm your host, Cassandra Chin, and we have Rhythm with us today. Hi, Cassandra. Can you I- introduce yourself? Yes, please. Um, my name is Rhythm Bhatia. I am a chief executive officer and founder of Cognizio, and I'm also associated with companies like Data Profit. Apart from that, I am pursuing my PhD in educational technology and artificial intelligence. And today I'm excited to have my session on that at GITS. Definitely very exciting. Have you given that session before? No, this is my first time. I think you'll do really great. Thank you. Um, I have taken some sessions, but this is my first with such a uh, amazing ca- crowd with uh, and who are so t- enthusiastic people like you yeah I think they're really eager to learn yes, here yes i heard that signups for this conference went by instantly yeah Can uh, you tell me a little bit about how you got started into tech well i come from a small town here in india uh kanpur uttar pradesh and um, my school had really cool teachers uh, especially we had a female teacher for computer science and i used to idolize her um uh, and uh, she got scholarship and she went to USA to pursue her PhD. I got so inspired. I was like, wow, this is the power of education and technology that uh, from the small town, she is getting to travel the world and uh, achieve and create so many things. And even when I would spend time in the labs in my school, uh, I would get to create new things and see results there uh, in form of websites, in form of games. And that is what made me so inspired me and uh, ha- and I developed that sort of hunger towards technology there that you can achieve a lot you can create a difference and see the cool results as well I think you're really fortunate that you got introduced to technology with the yeah. fun part yeah <laughs> you said you were introduced with like games and education technology yeah is there anything which you remember which was really fun Well, I remember the fun part was that um, we started with Logo. uh, That was a basic language. And uh, we used to create games. uh, Even during my master's, I created a game on using reinforcement learning, the game of chess, where you can update the moves. Uh, I think that was very cool. So, yeah. Yeah, I think chess is really fun. And the rules are so complicated. But uh, when you are the one creating algorithm, you know that uh, this one person will win and you can always analyze the patterns there. So did you like program the any computers play chess or just player versus player? Player versus player. Okay, yeah. But I'm more into education technology. My PhD is in that. Personalized learning analytics using artificial intelligence. So uh, I get to analyze the psychology part as well and the pattern as well. So to extend it from the gaming to into the real world. Yeah. Can you explain about the patterns you analyze more? The patterns we are analyzing in my PhD are uh, time based. So it's on more on longitudinal basis. So how a student learns and responds to the exactly the same questionnaire over time uh, based on different scenarios. So be- before exams, what are the response like and before their holidays, how they respond to the similar questionnaire and what are their thoughts that is going on in the student's mind so that the learning can be made more fun. Like you said, that I'm fortunate that I got introduced uh, based uh, to the computer science world and the fun part. I feel everyone should be, uh, for everyone, learning should be fun. I definitely agree with you. So, like, people have different answer to questions based on different times? Exactly. And same question based on different times. So it's just that 
uh, they are more stressed, so they will respond to the same questionnaire in a different manner. But if they are more relaxed and having fun, they will respond to the same same questionnaire in a different manner. So it's a little bit about like human psychology. Exactly, and artificial intelligence can help us analyze those patterns and help us better. So is artificial intelligence really far along on helping you to analyze? Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. That it's uh, uh, struggling at all, if that's what you mean. Ah, uh, but yes. It uh, it also depends on how we use natural intelligence with artificial intelligence. So it's important that we use it in a responsible manner. It's important that our algorithms are more inclusive and not biased biased uh, to one any one gender or race per se. Uh, so I think that is very important, and that's what even I I will even cover today in my talk that it's important to. Use it in ethical manner and e- inclusive manner. Yeah, that's... I definitely agree that ethical matters in AI can be a bit tricky. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, well, when I am collecting data, I ensure that uh, there are people from all the genders that they are represented. Uh, their own personal or private information is not used there. The security is maintained, and uh, there is no ethically. I we do not manipulate it in a, based on our own personal biases. Yeah. But wouldn't it be difficult to like uh, grab data from different genders perfectly? It is difficult, but uh, then uh, we can at least ensure that uh, in the school, if there are uh, if they are on uh, there's uh, under representation of a of a gender, we should then adjust our weights accordingly. That is something that we can do as a developer. Okay, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Are there any other points you want to talk about? Uh, I would like to say that, um, oh, especially for females uh, and for uh, female uh, from a place which is underrepresented, uh, be out there, uh, participate more to these conferences, reach out to people like her, uh, so that uh, we have role models. All of us have role models. I was fortunate enough to have one, uh, and I think everyone should have uh, role models. Like even you, what you are doing is also very awesome uh, through this. Uh, Thank you. I definitely yeah. agree with you. Yeah. So, like at a conference like this, what steps can we take to try to represent females more or just engage with them? I think uh, we uh, do not reach out more. Uh, Market yourself on LinkedIn. Mention out there that hey, I'm looking for speaking opportunities. Uh, be part of uh, be part of Women Tech Makers Ambassador. I'm part of that. Uh, that's an initiative by Google, uh, which uh, ensures that uh, females do get more representation there. Even even if you add it, even if you are selected and you add there, they give you more speaking opportunities. Um, you get you an algorithm. Your name comes up in suggestions more. So be part of these initiatives. Uh, I am also a part of uh, India Finland alumni community. I myself uh, mentioned that hey, I heard you are looking for a chairperson. If I can just throw my name in there and see if I can win the elections. So uh, be more confident um, and look out for more opportunities. Do not hesitate to uh, make that first move. Uh, uh, so yeah. so for the Google initiative, which you are part of. Is there like a minimum bar of knowledge or technical expertise? Uh, no, but they do. Uh, they do like to see that uh, you are doing uh, something for the community. Uh, you are uh, part of. Uh, you are volunteering. You are uh, your time to mentor other young girls as well. Uh, so that is the only criteria, and uh, you should be uh, doing something in the technical space as well. But they do not have any criteria that hey, you should be a PhD student or you should be a master student or something like so that. So really, anyone who's a little bit of technical should give it their shot. Yeah, and technical and is doing something for the community should give it their shot. Yeah, I like. Do you work with the community a lot? Yes, I do. Um, I was uh, uh, even during my college days. I was I would volunteer for the conferences as a student and um, um, when really like from picking up the chairs to helping the speakers and just but that also leaves strong impressions on you. Uh, you learn a lot that okay what are they speaking on on and then you follow them on LinkedIn that hey what did they do when they were in bachelors and masters so you uh, you can figure out your path through that you can carve your path through that. So even a small part like picking up the chairs can really help you exactly. get involved. Exactly, exactly, because you get a chance to listen to them speak. So even if the uh, and 
but really everyone starts from scratch so there's no uh, shame or no uh, harm in starting from there because you can learn a lot and then one day sit here or give interview and be a speaker yourself have you built any like really valuable connections while you were doing that job yes and they are still still very strong connections the i got to have like really cool mentors through these initiatives um uh, from grace hopper conference and that's how i came to know about google summer of code uh, got a chance to be a mentor there um and then uh, came to know about women tech makers initiative as well how was your experience with the grace hopper conference i loved it because that is uh, one place where females are more in number and males are uh, uh, are minority but uh, that's not the reason why i loved it i loved it because i got to see people from my own gender and uh, specifically from my own ethnicity as well stand up there and be speakers uh, that gives you more lot of confidence uh, grace hopper is also very strong in usa i uh, and uh, um, i do admire her because she's the one person who uh, 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 who did so much in the computer science field so Uh, so I think like going to conferences is good, but sometimes it can be a little bit hard because females are the minority. Yes, you, it can be a bit uh, intimidating. I think if that's the right word, here uh, yeah, that's the right word. Yeah, uh, it's not hard, but uh, I do not um, uh, uh, hate it. I mean, um, uh, but uh, it's intimidating because then you feel that why, where are the other females uh, at? Uh, but um, but i think that is something that we can change by being more being more proactively being part of it yeah so like as developer females it's important to have a good balance between attending normal conferences but also engaging in like women developer activities exactly um i i, I uh, there are people who helped me um male and female both mentors um uh, uh who helped me uh, uh, and who were good ra- role models for me so it's important to give back to the community it's important to uh, lend a hand to upcoming generation and help them and uplift them as well so that it i mean uh, so the graph should go up like yeah, that's the point have you been to the gibbs conference before no this is my first time here it's also my first time as well uh, <laughs> i think it's a really cool conference like a lot of passionate people and a lot of passionate topic a lot of different topics as well uh, like from front end to visual basic to artificial intelligence to data processing so i see like different topics here and i'm excited to attend these sessions um i think the other um, uh, like if i have to give a suggestion because if you attend these conferences you learn more about what exactly is going on in the world so you discover that computer science itself is such a vast field if i uh, if i talk about technology per se and uh, you can discover different fields uh, by just attending the booths you can discover what all is going on in different countries and different companies uh, c- come across different opportunities especially uh, in uh, during master students are looking for internships so they can they can get a chance to work for uh, on real world problem statements here yeah, yeah. So like even just attending conferences you can find a job here? Yes, very well. I I did find uh, uh, my masters. I met my masters uh, this is a uh, mentor, his friend at one of the conferences I attended inter speech conference. Um and there I was presenting a poster, so not paper, poster. And uh they just said, "Hey, this looks good. Uh, you I heard you are applying for masters." I'm like, "Yeah." so this lab has a opening just check it out and i checked out i got scholarship and went for my masters there so uh, like you never know i think that's really great like you can find opportunity just by meeting people in person yes and just by putting yourself out there like just saying that hey this is what i'm looking for if you come across something interesting let me know and then you never know yeah would you recommend this advice to like your colleagues or friends yes for sure uh, i mean uh until and unless you don't speak up and you don't say that hey this is the opportunity i'm looking for uh, how will other people know and how will they contact you i think speaking up can be challenging sometimes yes yes it is uh, but um, um, that's a fear that we have to work on uh, right. i mean especially as an entrepreneur if i don't speak uh, or present my product I, uh, you have to pitch your product every day you so just 
think of it as you are pitting yourself. <laughs> yeah. So a good way to learn how to speak is to have a strong passion for something. Exactly. And and belief, self-belief. Believe in yourself. I think yeah. we had a really good chat today. Yeah. So thank you, Rhythm. Thank you. Nice meeting you.